sabeu que, bueno, quan estàvem pensant... As you know, when we were thinking on this mission every year, we devote the city one subject, but the main subject of AI led us to where we are. We wanted to transform the artificial into common knowledge, humanize it, because as we are going to see, it has more to do with the social matters than what strictly artificial. And you think is a movement that came out in the jazz states. So musicians, jazz musicians, who were starting with innovative improvisation ways, they needed to overcome limits, to break structures, they needed freedom, they needed a sort of a blooming moment, something that was very well structured as jazz, had to take several forms. The movement uh, that led to the free jazz made any loop, any think everything was allowed, it was called the new thing. And basically the question I raised today is whether this wave that we are living through artificial intelligence is the new thing or what does the new thing mean? during this uh, digital era? Or are we just uh, facing a new hype? That is the value of the most of the NCTs. We were talking of this as the big boom of uh, NCTs and the richness they were generating through the change. And we could see that there were very interesting principles that, this, that made this hype disappear. In any case, I wanted to start uh, raising this question. Mostly because everyone understands that this is useful because it is tangible. We are embedding it uh, in automated tasks. The developers are very happy because the codes are automatically reviewed. The books are easily translated. It helps at writing. It is a very useful tool. It helps to make summaries. They can think about uh, titles. They receive many suggestions for the titles of books or essays. In Indeed, we have the whole day to talk about this. We have many questions on the table, but I don't want to get into the debate whether IA is good or not, whether it is useful or not. There are potential uses on a larger scale, but we also face uh, and see risks and problems uh, linked to the AI with a huge impact on our societies. Since we started to talk about uh, AI, at the end of the day, the questions that are being raised are all the questions, in fact. They have less to do whether with it, the AI is useful or not. It may have risk as any technology, but we are wondering about the property, the, about the knowledge, about the codes, who can manage these infrastructures that uh, consume, that uh, yeah, waste many resources, regulation, putting democratic controls on these technologies. So the questions of uh, or about the CDM first uh, social network, the, the issues raised about uh, huge platforms, infrastructures, the climate impacts of uh, technology development are the same. They are the same in the case of uh, AI. 
I took this uh, photo from the first uh, presentation of the Sidim with when Zuckerberg thought he had the key of democracy. Facebook is something different. Zuckerberg is playing another role. But we keep asking ourselves the same. Show me the code. We want to see how the technology is made. And we want to have this uh, knowledge back. We will talk about uh, risk. We talked about risk in previous edition, surveillance, discrimination, or privatization of knowledge. In a more or less covered way, the risk, uh, you know that uh, AI are trained, can be trained, and they can be even trained through fascist ideologies. We have, we may have a uh, chat GPT which might be fascist. So, how it is fed? Well, it came from a corpus very progressist. But imagine at the end of the day that machines do not know how to differentiate one thing from another. They are just fed. I would like to underline something which we have tried to apply as for environmental policies, the principle of risk. And the party is so large, so big that we can't measure its impact. I like, I love the idea. That's why we thought best that way. We want collective intelligence. I recommend you to listen to Xavier. He says that this is not uh, AI, but this is collective intelligence with uh, digital processing. All what AI sees is uh, knowledge generated by society, by humanity. It has been digitally processed, but this is collective and joint intelligence. This should be owned by the whole humanity. And the CDM, a platform which is searching to articulate collective knowledge processes, is a prototype that allows us to articulate, to further develop how the CDM is an instrument to AI because we gather many, we meet many and many, and we can get. Uh, to better conclusions. One of the successes of Decidim, as we said before, has to do with this uh, firm bet. This is applicable to AI, and unfortunately, we are far behind this of this uh, public leadership uh, around this development of technologies based on collective or artificial intelligence. And the states are wondering how they can make the rules, but the, the public initiatives to set some leaderships about this are uh, absolutely very scarce. So it is absolutely uh, a lost battle. So I raise the question, how can we think about a public AI at the service of people if there is no control at all on the main drivers developed by this technology? Within this debate, I will leave the experts in AI to tell us more deeply about these things. I can tell you three things about uh, collective intelligence and the limits we face to work with this uh, collective intelligence at the level of Decidim. Indeed, we've been working on the white book that we are drafting on Decidim and we 
try to share some critical thoughts about the deployment of Decidim. Because understanding Decidim as a space of synthesis of new ways of collective intelligence and social cooperation has to do with the understanding and evaluation of its uh, function. Let me underline some learnings. The book will soon be published. We've been working on several reports. We could find the difficulty of maintaining, of keeping, living and organic uh, spaces of participation, which are not uh, undertaken through the institutions such as city councils, the several organizations uh, of uh, the CDM and others. And, well, there are some rules of participation and we are not able to incorporate uh, more open spaces for discussion, self-organized uh, spaces that would allow to organize uh, a dialogue between permanent uh, forms of uh, communication as well as formal areas, communications of citizenry communication, so spaces for debate and empowerment of citizenship. It is happening in Twitter with a fascist decision of the platform. Every day I receive an advice of tweets that are encouraging hate and I receive an advice. I am being noticed you cannot uh, denounce a uh, claim against this tweet in an anonymous uh, way. Why do we have to switch to, why do we have to use these platforms to communicate uh, whilst we have a safe and safer spaces? We've learned that there is a border between the politics in capital letters and the politics of participation. Platforms as Decidim can help to be more present in the daily life of politics in capital letters. The one of those who make decisions about the future of our lives. The more we get away from local. Sphere, well, public decision making through Twitter has much more influenced still and we faced many things but also many times uh, some resistances in the forms of participation resistances on how we can innovate how we can deploy our fears our limitations which uh, have to do with our participation model. What is the new thing? We don't know it, uh, the new thing of the digital era, but for sure we know that it will have more to do with people, with uh, social and human technology, with uh, people collaborating with collaboration. Today it is uh, more relevant than ever our societies, if they do not bomb one another, we will not be able to have democracies. All this is undermining the democracy. The new thing is a celebration of a new schoolyard, which is the result of these participative processes. The new thing has to do with this, people building collectively their needs for a better future. Thank you very much for your attention. I give the floor to Carol. Thank you. Hola, días. ¿Se me escucha bien? Can you hear me? Yes, great. Thank you very much, Arnau. As always, we see 
that you are great when making these openings at the Steam Fest and uh, for sure we are able to uh, see that the many questions will be raised in our discussion. I'm Carl Romero and Reo, well, uh, made a great compliment and I'm blushing. I'm the responsible uh, for Decidim products and it is uh, to me to put the project into context, a project that for more than seven years uh, has been working to offer great uh, things and to share with you when we have the festival. Well, Jauma already told that we are very happy because in the end we were awarded uh, with this uh, digital award. It's something that really strengthens the model uh, for this uh, common uh, public uh, governance that will be a role model to create new technologies from the public sector. Moreover, in the last uh, days, we I saw which is the observatory uh, of the European Commission to acknowledge these uh, free technology projects that are developed for and uh, by the public administration and in any case it's a great collective uh, success and we must congratulate ourselves. Well, if we observe the uh, project development and the impact of the project, this would be the dashboard that we have today in Decidim. We have uh, more installations than ever all over the world. If we compare with the figures that are not less about last year, it is very important to be aware about the amount of participants that we have in Decidim ecosystem. We have a new member. Uh, which is the Brazilian government, and you know that the size of Brazil, for sure, <laughs> really is making us to work more than ever. And the statistics are soaring, which is something great. We will see more depth later on the Brazilian experience. Beyond Brazil, we uh, were uh, witnessing several uh, projects. We will have a look of uh, several initiatives. We know that the Uruguayan government with Digital uh, Agency and UNESCO are reviewing the AI strategy together with uh, citizens and uh, citizenship to include uh, multiple visions towards this strategy. At the beginning of the year, the uh, World Paris Agency launch for the first time a participatory uh, budget to distribute uh, 350,000 euros in order to face the water problems in Paris, also related with water. I'm talking about a river in Cochabamba in Bolivia. We launched a project aiming at the young population between 18 to 35 years of age for them to think about the uses of a Rocha River. And also, Joma already mentioned that, but we uh, knew that last year, uh, week. We know that the Catalan government, the Generalitat, is working for this uh, climate experience, including innovation elements such as different systems to pick the, all the methodologies and all the assemblies and maybe next year you will be with us to share this experience that uh, will be for sure very very successful with a great results. I'm just uh, reviewing the main examples and also those that were invited for this edition. I don't know if you remember, but last year we talked about all the municipality strategies and we wanted to make this uh, framework a little bit broader and to be aware of other uh, realities. And we picked and we selected these three. The first one is Gipudqua 2030. It is an initiative that was uh, created by the regional government of Gipudqua together with the support of the University of the Basque Country and the Agency for Citizenship to have a common vision of territories in 2030. It is a hybrid process. It's a hybrid process that uh, in the end had this uh, digital and in-person component. 
Estado, from Yukuzwa, we talk about it and how are they facing all the challenges. And we do have another project that to us it's uh, super important to us, uh, mainly because we can see loads of novelty. This uh, uh, let's strengthen the voices of migrants, how to empower the voice. Uh, and to put at the center migrants for political participation. It is a very ambitious project amongst five different countries and it has been deployed in Austria, Germany, Greece, Italy and Slovenia. If I'm not mistaken, and uh, Romy, Gress Gruber, Kier, and Adelina Stalina, they will talk about it later on. They will share with us all the challenges that must uh, face for this uh, process development. And in the end, well, the Brazilian experience, Brazil Participativo, with, in the end, it's one of the most encouraging processes that we witnessed last year due to the size uh, for the political commitment and also the Brazilian uh, commitment for Brazil to be a bigger uh, democratic structure on a long-term perspective in the country. So how do we make these uh, projects possible? We will see in a few minutes, but me, myself, I'm the product owner. So as a PO, I like to talk about the product. And I'd like to offer you some updates that we uh, developed in the end. It's an open source pro project that it's continuously evolving. And uh, this year, you know, you know, I do imagine, I guess, that uh, you and myself, uh, we are committed for more than one year in order to change the interface of Decidim uh, to know who is administrating uh, the level of usability, accessibility, the um, knowledge load that we have because sometimes it's very difficult to reduce this know-how load uh, from a political perspective it's necessary but not from the perspective of the interface i know that are now last year shared with you some prototypes right now we do not talk anymore about prototypes maybe we could have updated uh, this uh, decidim fest in another uh, venue but the first le is that we cannot mingle with the first uh, versions. We were not bold enough, so we must wait to see the final result. But you know that once you will get inside um, Decidim, you will find this portal. Once you will uh, find new features instead of this design, you will find this visual. Once you will offer a new proposal instead of uh, having this wizard, this is the visual that you will get and so on and so forth with all the different visuals and uh, portals as for debates. We also offered a new perspective to show all the elements and the decidim spaces. And if you are connected from any mobile device, you will also have a more mobile visual. As for the administration part, we also offered and we made a new uh, visual and it's up to you to say if we were able to reach this goal to improve usability i'm sure that you will find problems we are already detecting problems and we are working to improve the latest versions and we'd like also to include in this final version this guide that will help any organization to uh, make this strategy uh, more tailored and also more personalized to improve the results of the platform well what else? Roadmap uh, highlights. Once we will finish this uh, design, we will continue improving with the uh, common development for Decidim and also we will be releasing new versions. Maybe uh, the component of proposals, which is maybe the most used component and element such as the unit for participation, we will improve uh, geolocation of proposals uh, mainly uh, from uh, mobile uh, devices. Also, we will be able to map proposals by regions, not only uh, by different dots, also, we will have a new uh, functionality that it's not 
used too much, which is the uh, improvement of the merging and also the splitting the proposals, which is something very useful when facilitating these participatory processes. We need to rethink how to include the core ownership of rights and also beyond that, We'd like to split this idea of uh, uh, participatory <laughs> texts and also the proposals. It's not uh, uh, very well used, and we reached to the conclusion it is to develop a new module to be easier uh, to discuss uh, from a project onwards and to offer some proposals in a much more easy way. As for debates, well, some things are lacking behind and we must review the development of a new kind of debate. We will include this kind of Reddit or Ask Me Anything models. We can witness lots of possibilities to improve this deliberative part of decidim and also to include these decision models and how to include these uh, voting processes so all along the debates and also how in a platform we can make this visualization of metrics of the activity that we are making possible how to have these metrics and to measure everything we want to boost this part and uh, finally this improvement that has been a very long and heavy process. I must to get in, to register, to get the code. So we'll try to improve this sign up and the verification processes. And we will offer you some examples that are very common, which is this a very punctual participation. We offer the possibility to participate and they don't want to participate in a recurrent manner. They only participate once. So in this way, we'll make all the changes possible to make this kind of participation in the platform possible as well. Well, two other things that we include, two new models. One of the models has been shared before by Arnau that has to do with this philosophy that uh, was always in the hands of Tessidim. This ability to get organized, something that we dealt with during our previous meetings. Also opening a new space from the participant uh, profile for them to be able to participate, to have conversations and discussions without the role of the administrator. This will be a fantastic lever for this bottom-up uh, dynamics. We will work with that as well. And we'll be developed because right now we already have a very mature ecosystem with different participatory experiences. The moment has arrived to include systematized indicators that will help us to make a self-assessment to know the level of quality of processes that we are making possible. So, in principle, everything has to be set. We will test everything in Barcelona, and after that, we will sit and wait, and we'll hope that everything will be available for the whole community. I'm reaching towards my end. I just want to share with you some data from the product team. When we developed the roadmap and the finishing uh, results, we want to reach this goal, which is to have a broader roadmap, a uh, roadmap that has already very mature. So we need to aim towards Decidim 1.0 and to get a final version of a Decidim. Later on, we'll be able to think about the posterior versions and also how the development will be able to stabilize the framework without books, without issues and troubles, to reduce the level of problems with a Im continuous improvement of usability and uh, minimizing uh, the uh, new uh, module addition as well. And what happens with AI? Well, because in the end, I didn't mention AI. We have enough, right, in this roadmap, and now it's not us to think about AI. But in any case, we already have the AI. 
and I'm technically speaking, I can tell you that we already have AI in the city because you are all aware that everything that has to do with the spam, it is a recurrent problem in almost all the platforms that have a certain level of activity. So we made our first tests with this technology to mitigate this problem and we include uh, language models to better uh, get adapted to spam management. We thought about other uh, strategies. Uh, Xavier and Robert will think about it and uh, talk about it after the coffee break. However, before, let's listen to Decidim's that maybe do not include AI right now, but I'm convinced that right now they <laughs> include a lot of uh, collective intelligence. Let me just conclude with this uh, quote by the Palestinian poet Mahmoud Harbis that says, inside the intelligence of a people, sorry, Inside the collective intelligence of a country that's where we realize the biggest dreams, we are a whole of aspirations and shared hopes. Thank you.